Hi guys, Rony here and welcome to the workshop. Today I want to show you my new race bike for the 2024 season. I know, not this one, it's this one. It's a Factor Ostro Vam that we've shown you on a build video a couple of months ago. And to be honest, I haven't really been riding it because I'm saving it for the dry days uh, during the season. And in that video, you already got a glimpse of the equipment, but since then it got a few upgrades. So today I want to tell you a bit more about all the parts that we have on there, starting from the front, as always. So one of the key components that I have on this bike is the Spico custom integrated handlebar. This is made to my exact specifications. Uh, is the narrowest width that the UCI allows, pretty long reach, and also long reach here in the lever section for a better forearm support in the aero position. So that was carried over from the previous bike. One slight change compared to my previous setups is the thicker bar tape. So this is the, this is the Silka Nastro Cusino 3.75 mil, so the thickest variant. I upgraded to this because in the summer I rode a lot in the rough uh, mountain roads uh, here nearby in Hungary. So I needed that extra cushioning in the descents. Also, I still have the spin shifters on to complement the Drace DI2 group set. This is all basically the same stuff as I've used before. The wheel is slightly different. So the front wheel we have here is a head uh, Vanquish RC6 Pro. It's the slightly updated version that I got this year. So the rim shape is ever so slightly different and the molding process is a bit more refined. So you get a nicer edge um, in this part and also a nicer shinier finish, which looks pretty amazing to be honest. And since this is going to be my dedicated race bike, um, I've also optimized the other aspects of the wheel. So instead of the standard uh, GP5000 <clears throat> STR, I've got the thinner TT version here, which is a thinner, more uh, compliant casing. So that means very low rolling resistance, but also higher grip in the corners, but less durability and puncture protection. That is in part negated by the tubolite uh, tire inserts that I use on there. As you can see, the tire is not inflated. It hasn't got any sealant in it yet, so it will not hold air. Again, I'm doing this because I'm preserving it for the season. The bearings have also been upgraded. While head uh, uses very high quality Japanese EZO bearings, I've upgraded these to ceramic speed coated units with a very a light application of their Tantra specific grease. So again, this is a race day optimized setup. As for the brake rotor, you can see a slight change uh, here in form of the Carbon TI Exoder. This is the version three, so the latest one. And I haven't been using these before because they were not available in the center lock variant. Now that's a new thing for 2024 slash 2023 it's a pre-order so they're still available and most weight weenie builds use these kind of rotors but weight is actually not the reason why i'm using them the main reason is that i got quite tired of always fixing bent shimano rotors they're very easy to bend as it's just basically uh, an aluminum steel sandwich very fragile and also they warp under heat, which these don't. This is a full solid steel brake rotor with a floating design and a carbon carrier. So no issues with bending or, or warping on the heat. I haven't really tested them yet. So if you're keen to see how they perform in the long run, then make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for later. So that's definitely a new part for me along with the tires and the bearings. Yeah, the rest of the cockpit, again, unchanged spring shifters, I already mentioned, custom 3D printed computer mount for my Wahoo Element Bolt. It's also unchanged from the previous setup. A couple slight changes also in the group set of upgrades. 
uh, a few balls that were well, available in titanium variants I replaced with anodized titanium units from Better Bolts. So this is a new brand that I'm carrying now in the shop. So I've got titanium brake flat mounts or flat mount bolts, front derailleur, rear flat mount bolts, and the stem bolts as well. And also the headset compression bolt. It's not visible because we have this nice little sticker on here as a finishing touch. I got a huge amount of questions already uh, regarding my pads on the bar. These are Silicon Astro Aero uh, grip pads. So normally these are used on time trial bikes. But here I just added on a couple of them to aid the grip basically in the hoods position because this bar has a long enough reach so that actually makes sense for me. And also I can just lay down on them with my forearms and they still grip <clears throat> a pretty stunning feature of this bike build of course is the custom paint job the factor prisma studio in these pretty striking colors we chose these basically for visibility to get uh, many eyes on the bike or as many eyes as we can and i think that worked out based on the results uh, of recent posts so i'm happy with that if you go further down uh, towards the back, another new thing that I'm using for this bike are the Carbon Works bottle cages. Uh, these are also an updated version that I got from Simon not so long ago. So these now feature a two part design. So this carbon fiber loop that holds the bottle in place is one piece and this little tab that basically acts as the bottom stopper there is no longer made of carbon but it's an anodized aluminum piece and it's a separate one which is held on by the bolt here this is for added durability and sturdiness yeah and that's i also got a cat now so it's also new uh, to me <clears throat> anyways uh, to the drivetrain all this has been carried over from the previous bike so i've got the rotor aluminum crank set with 30 mil spindle aluminum for the reason that i described earlier in my short video because i had a problem with the carbon one that the bond here failed in this uh, middle section so i prefer the sturdiness of aluminum i've got the speed play aero pedals with the shorter titanium spindles for minimizing my Q-factor. I have pretty uh, narrow hips, so I prefer the pedals to be close together and this really uh, fits me. This is basically as close as I can get uh, without rubbing the cranks. And actually I had to experiment with this a little bit because the standard uh, speed play pedal offset is 56 mil. Uh, this one this pin was very, very short. It's just a 50. So if I don't add any spaces on, then I get crank rub. So I had to add a one mil spacer on each side. And that's just about right. 54, uh, 40 Durace chain rings on the power to max MG power meter. That's all unchanged. This is the SL version as well so with the larger cutout for some weight savings. The race from the railer, standard stuff, KH, chain catcher, everything as it used to be. Uh, the race, box chain, also unchanged. Uh, now we are using the updated formula of the molten speed wax. So if you look at the zero friction facts uh, lubricant test, you can see that this is actually now the highest performing uh, lubricant of any kind on the market. So it even outperformed the Silka and Ceramic Speed variants uh, by a good margin, so I like to stick to that. It's also very competitively priced, and if you're looking to buy some in the Europe, then I'll put, post the link down below to our web shop where you can get it. A couple of new cool components. Uh, 
that are as you see on the top of the bike are the Darimo uh, super light seat post and the Viv uh, Max saddle. So these are pretty boutique components. I chose the Darimo seat post again, not really because of the weight, but because I needed an offset seat post for my other bike. So I just took the one that came with this, put it on there on the gravel bike and they're basically the same price as the standard seat post from Factor, at least for me at the dealer level. So <clears throat> I just put it on there because it looks cool, saves a bit of weight. Um, if you really want to save weight on a bike, then you need to do it in areas like these where it doesn't affect rolling resistance or aerodynamics. So this is a very good spot to do that. Same goes for the saddle. This is an extremely light saddle, uh, despite being padded. It uses a very exquisite uh, manufacturing process. Actually, the rails are bonded in the same one piece as the shell of the saddle, which is completely unique. Um, it's a very intricate process. That's why it also makes the saddle pretty expensive, but it looks beautiful. It's very light and very comfortable as well. Again, if you're looking to get one of these, uh, I'm not sure that anyone else stocks it in Europe apart from me, but you can pre-order yours in the link also down below. It's another cool product. And then uh, for the rest, the setup on the rear wheel is identical as I explained on the front one. So TT tire, coated ceramic speed bearings, um, time trial grease, uh, tubolite insert, everything identical. The race rear cassette is pretty standard, 1130. I prefer the closer gear range of the small cassette. I don't really have any steep long mountains, uh, so I don't need the big one. 140 carbon TI rotor, again for the same reasons to match the front one. And re the rear Mac is equipped again, like in previous builds with the SLF motion aero cage and is fitted with the factor direct mount derailleur hanger for extra stiffness and better shifting. So these are pretty much all the components that make up my new race bike. Mm. I've actually done my first race on it where I got a podium without these upgrades. Of course, these are very marginal in terms of performance, but they definitely look cool, so I'm really happy with how it turned out. I wanted to make it a bit special because of the paint job, so I added all these boutique components, and um, I'll be updating you about the performance of them later on. And if you want to see the full rundown of my experiences with this particular bike model, uh, then I have a huge article on my blog post where there are where everything is mentioned, all the details, it has around 6,000 words. So if you're into that, then I'll also post uh, the link below. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.